Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I'm obsessed with all things theatre. Mostly musicals, but sometimes plays as well, and today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the most exciting plays currently in the West End. I've been meaning to catch this for ages because I've been so, so intrigued and I've heard such good things about it, even though I knew very little about it to begin with. I am talking about The Ocean at the End of the Lane, the brand new stage adaptation of the book by Neil Gaiman, currently playing at the Duke of York's Theatre, having transferred from the National. This production has been critically acclaimed, it has brilliant word of mouth from its audiences, and it's the latest in a long string of very successful national theatre adaptations of beloved fiction books. So as far as I was concerned, it was essential viewing. So I went last weekend, the Today Ticks rush tickets hooked me up, I was in the centre of the stalls, four rows from the front, perfect, perfect seat for a very affordable price. Go and check out the Today Ticks app if you don't have it already, just make sure you're not getting rush tickets when I want them, because I'm gonna I'm a be very upset with you. Honestly, I have mixed feelings about even recommending this to you. So, let me tell you all about the ocean at the end of the lane. I have zero hesitation whatsoever in saying that this was a five-star show. This was objectively a five-star show, brilliant piece of theatre, and it was a five-star show for me. It ticked so many boxes of what I love in a piece of theatre. And the way that this used puppetry and stagecraft and beautiful lighting design and magic to deliver this story and utterly convince you of this fantasy epic happening on a stage feet away from you is just everything about why I love theatre and why theatre can achieve things that different mediums of storytelling cannot. The story itself I had literally no knowledge of, but it is chilling, it is spine tingling, it's harrowing, it's the stuff of nightmares at some points, but it's also charming and endearing. Like the world building in this, which is something that I think is so important anyway, was so clear and I just wanted to step into it and live in it, even if it was horrifying and terrifying and creepy for most of the duration. I still wanted to exist and be a part of that story with those characters, and that's one of the most important things. It almost made me feel like a child again, discovering a great story and wanting to be friends with those characters and wanting it to happen to me, which is messed up because, again, horrifying things happen in this show. I don't want to give you too many spoilers, but there's a couple of trigger warnings you may want to check for on the website before you go see this. That's all I'm going to say. So I have to give a huge shout out to the creative team on this show because the direction was stunning, the use of lighting, the use of sound was just phenomenal. You have this story here that has so many different levels to it. It has moments where it's just being a traditional sort of a play being told on stage and the action is quite mundane. And then we go into these fantasy epic moments and then we go into these dream sequences and then it turns into this very different thing where it's this almost like Arthur Miller, Eugene O'Neill-esque confrontation between family members that's just this emotional debate. And it really has so many different forms that it metamorphosizes into and for a director to make that seamlessly flow throughout in conjunction with a brilliant lighting designer and a whole entire brilliant creative team I think was just incredible. You could really see their work happening on the stage. The director was Katie Rudd, the lighting designer was Paulie Constable because of course it was. That makes perfect sense now that I hear that that's who that was. The movement director was Stephen Hoggett and that was something that I thought was particularly brilliantly done as well. Shout out to the costume and puppet designer Samuel Wyatt. There was some lovely puppetry in this show and the puppetry director Finn Caldwell and of course, I'm just finding this out, the Magic and Illusions director and designer was Jamie Harrison. Obviously it's Jamie Harrison. Every time my mind is blown in a show, it's Jamie Harrison. Literally at the top of their game when it comes to theatrical magic. If you don't know, Jamie Harrison worked on Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and you see a lot of similarity in the way that the set has been designed for this to allow just crazy magic to happen and people are appearing and there is a lot of stuff that happens. Some of it you sort of see how it's done and then other bits blow your entire mind. The easiest thing to do honestly as an audience member is just to accept that that's happening and it's just magic because you can see that in theory something could be going on but it's so hard to work it out that it's easier to just surrender yourself to the possibility that magic may really exist and that's how they're doing that on stage. So my highlight moments in this show, I mean there's one scene in the first act where they do something very clever with doors. This is going to be a little bit of a spoiler alert because I just want to talk about how brilliant this is. So if you haven't read the book, if you haven't seen the show, if you don't want to find out about this, skip ahead to the next section where I'm going to talk about the cast. So the first act of this show is all about how this demon from another world, who is not called a demon, they are called a flea, I was paying attention, they managed to travel through to this world through a wormhole 
in the hand of our protagonist, which is super gross, by the way. And they emerge as this incredibly glamorous femme fatale woman named Ursula, who I'm obsessed with. Like, can we discuss that first of all? I was literally thinking to myself after the show, if I had been the protagonist in this story, I'd have been fully like, I know you're a demon from another realm and I should hate you, but I'm literally too obsessed with you to not be into this. She doesn't even want to take over the world. She just wants to live there in the house. And I'm like, I'm fine with that because you are iconic and you are everything. So she comes in being very sly with a facade of niceness about her. But when she becomes more transparently evil towards the protagonist, when the two of them are understanding each other and she's being more just plainly malevolent, she has this moment where she locks him behind this door and then another door appears and the world is morphing around him. And she goes out one door on stage left, she leaves. And then she comes in another door on stage right, almost instantly afterwards and then she goes out that door and then she comes in another door for a split second as someone was turning a door i clocked siobhan harrison in a blonde wig so they are using doubles but oh my gosh the way they do it some of them i was like oh okay so she's gonna come oh but now she's there that one i have no idea like it had moments where i was like i kind of get what they're doing but i need to watch it at least 10 more times to really plot how she is going in and out of all these doors because she just kept disappearing and reappearing and it was genius my other highlight moment of the show was in the second act, which is almost the opposite. No flash, no magic whatsoever. It was just the scene where he is stuck in one spot because there are demons that are trying to get to him. These creepy birds that are going to give me nightmares for months, by the way. Oh my God, these birds. Like Hitchcock wishes his birds were as scary as these birds. These are, these are the scariest birds. It goes these birds, Hitchcock's the birds, the vultures from Dumbo, and then literally all other birds. Wait, do I mean Dumbo? Which Disney movie had vultures in? Was it The Jungle Book? Were they creepy vultures or were they like the Beatles? Someone tell me in the comments section, please. I'm, I'm all turned around. Anyway, so our protagonist is on this one spot. The use of lighting here is brilliant and different characters are coming in because these birds are showing him visions of these other characters to get him to leave the circle and trying to persuade him. And his dad comes in and they have this whole very honest confrontation where he's screaming things at him he wouldn't have normally said because he thinks he's an apparition. And then after they just let rip at each other and he says these terrible confessions, his dad steps into the circle, revealing that it is actually his dad. He's not a demon. And it's this incredible emotional moment that's given just like as long as it needs. And to come out of the fast moving plot and go into that scene and give it that much space and give it that much time is so powerful and really pushes home that this is a story that has a whole fantasy science fiction epic otherworldly plotline, but it's really about this relationship with his dad. That's what the whole story is really about. The cast were brilliant, the ensemble in this were brilliant. I love a play with a hardworking ensemble because you don't see it as often. You know, you expect to see it in musical theater. I love a play with ensemble where everyone is just involved. I love a play with ensemble where you have big actors playing principal roles who then go back into the ensemble and are helping like support people physically and moving things around and carrying set pieces and doubling for other actors. I love that. Like be a company and deliver the story. There's no ego to it whatsoever. I think that's really brilliant. And it's very national theater as well. Everyone is one in that rehearsal room. So the praise for this has to start and end with James Bamford as Boy, the unnamed protagonist. He gives an incredibly brave and powerful performance here. So convincingly naive and pained and uh, just all of the turbulent emotions that he is portraying, it's put across so, so well. Penny Laden, also completely brilliant as old Mrs. Hempstock. This is a lovely part. She has some really great moments in this show, just dispensing wisdom. And she gets some of these great comedy moments as well as this older grandparent character who's sort of kooky but also knows everything and then is like a boss ass witch at the end. Laura Rogers as Ursula is everything, is absolutely iconic, is giving you femme fatale, brilliant, Cruella de Vil, Rita Skeeter, villainess, realness, and I'm I'm unashamedly obsessed with her. Nicholas Tennant. So Nicholas Tennant plays the boy at the beginning, and then we flash back to the past, and he plays his own father. And to play both of those roles, and to experience both of those dynamics, to play both the father and the son in later life, sort of finding himself in that role, looking back at that same relationship, A, that is a mindfuck, 
and B, he just does it really well. There's a particular scene where he does something sort of unspeakably cruel and difficult to watch in punishing his son, and the way that he plays the slow moment where he's emotionally getting himself ready for this, it's really not justifiable, but the way that you understand his thought process and his desperation leading up to that moment because of how he has shown you his struggles as a single parent leading up to that point is really important, is really clever, and is really carefully played. And the other one I absolutely loved, Grace Hogg Robinson as his sister. She gave you all of the comic relief moments. Like, this is a, at times, devastatingly intense storyline with a lot of trauma and a lot of sort of harrowing, nightmarish happenings. So to go back to those scenes where she's just being <laughs> so hysterically bratty and obnoxious and self-involved and whiny and needlessly argumentative is just delightful. Who would enjoy this show? This is a great one for teenagers, young adults. This is the kind of show that will make them fall in love with the storytelling power of theater. Anyone who has ever been a great fiction lover, anyone who really loves books and loves young adult stories and science fiction and fantasy and that whole genre, this is absolutely essential. Any fan of the book, I'm sure you're going to love this. Any fan of like a Philip Pullman, of a Neil Gaiman, of a Terry Pratchett, of a Ewan Colfer. Go and see this show. It is the perfect gateway from that world into the world of theatre. At the same time, there is nothing juvenile about this story. It makes you feel all of the emotions, and it's also a really great catalyst for exploring your own feelings to do with grief and to do with re-examining difficult child-parent relationships. I think it's really interesting. So if you're someone wanting to explore that, then by all means go and see this play. I think there's a lot of very serious um, and emotionally powerful themes in there for adult viewers as well. It is like, like this is by no means children's theatre. This is a serious, serious play that appeals to a wide range of age groups. I would love to go and see this again. It was a beautiful, beautiful production, and I'm gonna recommend it to a whole bunch of people. Do yourselves a favor, go and dive into the ocean at the end of the lane. Check out the Today Ticks Rush to get yourself some really great seats. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And if you've already seen the show, let me know what you thought in the comments section as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel where there is plenty more regular stage of content coming all of the time about all your favorite West End shows. Also, if you Want to help support me as a stagey content creator and gain access to a bunch of exclusive photo, video, and behind the scenes content, head over to patreon.com forward slash Mickey Joe Theatre where you can watch more videos over there. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe!